So, so we are with uh, Flex Enabled, so who are you? So I'm Indra Mukherjee, Chairman of Flex Enabled, and we're here today showing technology for the wearable revolution. The wearable revolution is going to take place in many ways. This is an example, for example, of a wearable bracelet that you can put on, and we have a coat there to which it displays a uh, stitch. And we have many chances to show different kinds of displays. On so you can do flexible displays. You can do even LCD. We can do LCD. We How can, can do, you do we can flexible do LCD? We can do bendable LCD. So you can conform it round the surface to make sure that it's bent, and you can do that. And we can do a flexible OLED instead. Flexible OLED, flexible e-ink, flexible LCD. Exactly. And this is happening right now. It's happening right now, and my colleague is now going to show you the next. So here the flex enable uh, booth. So what are you showing right here? Well, I'm showing a number of wearable concepts that use flexible displays um, to make thin, light, and body-shaped devices, which we can, you know, innovate interesting wearable device concepts with. So, so the idea of this one is it could it could go on the jacket. Absolutely, this one is is so thin and light that it can be magnetically attached to the sleeve, and there's a gesture recognition feature, so that you know if you're skiing or something, you can just wave your hand across. And, nice. and move across the, uh, the content. Different menus like and that. stuff. Yeah. And then there's another shape right here. This is e-ink. That's right. So these two concepts use uh, electrophoretic displays. Um, yeah. And this is, again, a very thin and light display, a flexible display enabled by Plastic Logics technology. And this is one type of display. Uh, we're also applying the same flexible transistor technology to uh, LCD displays. And this is a color flexible LCD. This display. is LCD. This is LCD. That's and right. is it right here also? Absolutely. This is uh, this is how thin it can be and this is 130 microns, extremely thin. There's no glass in it, so it's robust. So, uh, we're looking at uh, a flexible LCD. How is that possible? Oops. Oh, sorry. And uh, unbreakable. How is that possible? It's possible by forming the transistors that drive the LCD on plastic substrate using organic electronics in a very low temperature process. So that's very unconventional, very innovative, and it unlocks a whole new world of application potential because, because of the thinness. Because LCD is 99% uh, of uh, displays in the world, right? It's the dominant display technology. For, for and smartphones? Absolutely. And, and so now you're going to be able to make it flexible? Absolutely, and F uh, Flex Enable has the technology that enables a conventional LCD fab that makes glass displays to upgrade to make these thin plastic displays. And so it's not only LCD, we're also making and demonstrating OLED displays, which can be even thinner and more flexible. Than so you LCD. can do all three, and uh, right here, is this yes. real? That's real, that's a real OLED display that's so thin it can be wrapped around a pencil that's 100 microns thin. So OLED is extremely thin when, uh, when you do it with flexible. How, how, uh, how thin can this build be? This is a little bit, um, it's marginally thicker, but you also have to package a backlight behind it. So that ultimately the thinnest solution will be OLED, but there are many applications where LCD will be very, very effective. And the, the, the liquid crystals are not, or they're not spreading around if, if you kind of break it no, or something? No, it's a special design it's gonna be with, a, with a spacing design such that you can actually bend it, you know, for a wrist shape. Yeah. Um, so this easy. one is right here, it's real. It's and a it's a flexible. So how many people have been? Display. How many people have actually been able to make flexible LCDs? Uh, there has been some research work in the past on flexible LCDs, but the issue is that um, because LCD, conventional LCD, is a high temperature process, um, it requires very expensive materials to sustain those high temperatures. What's unique about what we do is we do it at very low temperature, so we can use very low cost plastics. In fact, we use the same. Uh, we use uh, very low, uh, as I said, very low cost plastics for all our displays. Is this uh, uh, printed electronics? What it is. is. It? It's uh, organic is... electronics, plastic electronics. So it's fundamentally built from uh, flexible materials um, from the ground up. So we're not engineering flexibility into this. It's fundamentally flexible. That's the beauty of organic materials. How is uh, uh, the quality of the display compared to uh, a glass or what is the other stuff that would be? Well, as you mentioned, the dominant display technology is amorphous silicon on glass for LCD. And our transistors are now higher performance than amorphous silicon on glass. And so we can do any, anything and everything that amorphous silicon on glass can do. You can have same saturation, same color, same yes, refresh yes, rate. Yes, because we can make the same performance transistor 
that as the amorphous silicon transistors that you're familiar with. In your Same device. resolution. Yes, yes. All that stuff is yes. going to be there too. Yes. So what are you, what's 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 the next step? So uh, how old is the the, the company Flex Enable, and uh, what what's going to happen now? Uh, well, we are working with uh, many end users of the technology and potential manufacturers in order to build uh, the first concepts and products uh, concepts around around the technology so that we create a whole value chain from materials to manufacturing process and manufacturing scenario right through to the compelling end user products in wearables. Because it's flexible, I expect it could be extremely compact uh, smartwatches and stuff like that, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and of course, compactness is critical in wearables because uh, if you make the display thinner, you can make the battery thicker and you can make the battery life longer. Right here, this is a little bit... Uh a, th a thick one, but it could be very thinner or...? Yes, this is a, a concept model for a, an outdoor sporting type application and uh, this could be engineered to be extremely uh, thin. Alright, so, but it's, it's crucial. Are you a fabulous semi uh, display company or you need to get access to the display factories? They're huge, right? Well, we, so have, do do we have a prototype facility in Cambridge, UK, so we can make... You can make prototypes. Uh, we can make prototypes. And we have um, packaged our process so that it can be adopted by mainstream display manufacturers and with a minimal investment to, to upgrade an existing line to make it uh, capable of making plastic displays. But it's still a big quantity required for, for them to agree to, to switch the factory into making this, right? So you need big order. Well, you need of course, a of course. Brand? That's one of the reasons why we work with end users and technology to create these compelling product concepts because that then provides the pull through for the whole value chain for flexible electronics and that that's a major theme of this ID Tech show so are you uh, are you uh, you announced uh, here at the show you announced a, a lab right uh, you making a lab now that's right a wearables technology lab that's where the various players in that in this supply chain can come together and innovate wearable concepts and, and make them work in reality so does that mean if some 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 cool guys who want to do a Kickstarter or something like that they should come and talk with you and anybody, then you can make a anybody, concept? Anybody who's interested in enabling cool wearable concepts with thin and flexible robust displays should absolutely talk to us because we can enable that. Alright, so how soon are we going to be able to buy all these things? Well, I think um, the key year for this is going to be 2017. So we've got technology that exists, it can be demonstrated. We need to create the final product concepts and to bring the supply, uh, the value chain together to, to ramp it up. So 2017 is a pivotal year and that will be very exciting for the whole industry. So that's going to be mass mass production 2017. Yes. Why not 16 or 15? That's well, not possible. Because it still requires, um, I think the first applications will absolutely happen then. But uh, to actually get it out there in mass, produ in, you know, in mass produced form uh, still requires some scale up work. Even though our process is already industrialized, it will need to be industrialized in slightly different forms and into these new product concepts. So you just had a, there was a keynote right here and uh, there's lots of people in industry, uh, I think, I guess, are, work, are talking with you, right? Everybody's talking with you? Yes, I think we're pretty well known as being one of the uh, core technology providers in this whole area of thin and plastic robust displays. And so uh, we're fortunate enough to get visibility of a lot of the exciting product concepts that are coming, even though we can't talk all about, the, uh, talk about all of them. How does the business world work? Is it going to be licensing the technology to uh, factories, uh, to the fabs, right? How does how's uh, it going to be? Yes, we can make small quantities, but um, we will work with our fab partners, licensees of our technology to supply those volume markets. All right. So looking forward to a ton of uh, flexible displays. Yeah. And how about flexible touch? That's also possible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is. And so how would that work? And flexible gesture recognition. So you would you would work with the the flexible touch supplier companies? Okay. Yes, that's another layer of, on the stack. And in fact, we have successfully integrated um, organic photodiodes into these displays so that you can do gesture recognition as one kind of uh, human interface interaction. Organic uh, photodiodes. Yes, from our partner ISORG. Is, but is that, uh, there's no camera, there's not a camera in there or? Uh, there isn't a camera, but if I show you on this device, uh, if I wave across it, you can see that it updates. And that's, a, that's um, through the use of integrated organic photodiodes with the transistors. But where so are they? It's, it's one step towards a fully integrated uh, system on plastic where it's not just the, the display but also logic functions and other 
how the system functions are all implemented in the same technology. So photodiode is not about taking pictures, but it's about recognizing shapes and stuff? Exactly, exactly. It's image recognition, it's gesture recognition in this case. But, uh, across uh, the whole display? Well, in this case, we have uh, a small number, a small number, a few places to get the gesture. Okay. But actually, you can make a, an array, an image, using our transistors and ISOR um, organic photodiodes. You can actually image from uh, a printed system. So there's going to be lots of flexible e-ink. There's going to be lots of flexible uh, OLED. But uh, there's going to be even more flexible LCD. Do you think, or how's it going to be? Oh, I think it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. I think there'll be a very big. Uh, conformable LCD market where people will make uh, LCD displays that are formed around curved objects.